It has been said that since the first fleet arrived, Australians have been unsure whether they're on the side of the convicts or the guards. From that moment, allegations of corruption and the Australian police have never been far apart. By the 1970s, many began to suspect that the 16,000-member New South Wales police force, the third largest in the world, was rotten with entrenched corruption. There was talk of high-level police protecting drug dealers and trafficking drugs themselves, of police involved in assault, in verbaling, in fabricating evidence, in murder. If true, this was not a case of a few bad apples, but a diseased crop. The police were out of control. In 1994, an extraordinary confluence of events allowed a now legendary team of corruption fighters to take them on. To do so, they unleashed an investigative model so extreme, it seemed to challenge the very boundaries of justice itself. I'm alleging that there's incompetence, cover-up, involving a large number of uh, senior police. For 20 years, John Hatton, the independent member from the South Coast, had endangered his life collecting evidence about high-level corruption in the New South Wales police force. Corruption, he believed, that went all the way to the top. It does appear as if some departments have worked together to prevent the truth from coming out. And if we don't learn from history, then history will repeat itself, especially if we don't single out those corrupt officers and get rid of them. If you do not do this, then you will stand condemned. On May 11th, 1994, Hatton, along with two other independents, held the balance of power in the minority Liberal Party government. He decided to play his hand. Urgent motions. Honourable member for South Coast. Mr Speaker, I move that this House calls upon the Premier in consultation with the Leader of the Opposition to establish a Royal Commission staffed by personnel other than serving of former New South Wales Police to inquire into the operations of the Police Service. Mr Speaker, corruption is entrenched in the of the New South Wales Police Service. Order. My secretary, Linda Furness, heard Griffith on the phone saying, Tony, get the troops over here. The urgency of this motion, I believe... And within a short time, they'd obviously collected in mass and they filed in, in full uniform. The top brass of the police service packed that gallery. That the police force is out of control is beyond question. That didn't intimidate me one little bit. This minister should resign. Things had got to such a stage that they thought they were above the parliament. We've listened to the drama queen as such part of a deliberate campaign to destroy the confidence in the New South Wales Police Service. I've said they are the best in the world they are. And we have to sit and listen to the garbage trawled out by the little corruption fighter from the South Coast. It's fantasy, not facts. This is a motion about John Hatton and his attempt to bring down the Commissioner of Police at any cost. It is, in this case, a figment of the political imagination. Uh, we have uh, dealt with institutionalised corruption. But the Parliament felt differently. And after nine gruelling hours of ferocious debate and 46 eyes to 45 noes, John Hatton got his urgent motion for a Royal Commission through by a single vote. In favour say aye of the contrary, no, I think the ayes have it, the ayes have it. Independent MP John Hatton has won crucial support in the Parliament for his pursuit of the New South Wales Police Force. He deluged the Parliament with allegations, naming high-ranking police officers right up to Commissioner Tony Lauer. There are two things that I look forward to. The first is seeing Mr Hatton away from parliamentary privilege in the witness box at the Royal Commission. And the second is my opportunity to once again clear my name. I was very much aware that there was controversy about the inquiry and there were those uh, on one side of politics and also those within the police who said this is an absolute waste of time because this is a, a squeaky clean police force. So I was aware of the, the 
people who said, no, don't do this, but I also thought this was worth doing. A Supreme Court judge has taken on the toughest chore in New South Wales. Justice James Wood was named today to conduct the Royal Commission into the police force. What I did was to set up a situation whereby Gary Cook, senior counsel, assisted me as, as the, at the head of the investigative train. Then a phone call came, and it was James Wood, and we spoke, and uh, I laughed. I said, what? <laughs> Do you really think that I'd be interested in doing anything like that again? Nigel Hatch was uh, known for a number of years, and he, was a, he also had had a long experience both in England um, and in Ireland. Uh, and in Australia with Australian Federal Police. I went to Sydney where I met Gary Crook for the first time uh, in the company of, um, of the judge. We had to assemble a, a team very quickly and it was clear that I was not to use New South Wales Police. The commission was to be made up of three investigative teams and over 400 expert personnel. Each had to be hand-picked from every state and territory except New South Wales. No member of that police service was above suspicion. Well, what I was looking for was some fairly hard-nosed um, detectives um, who, um, who were up to the task. Um, it obviously wasn't going to be a, a job for the faint-hearted, and uh, you needed people of that calibre. So they came from a, a variety of backgrounds, uh, major crime squads, armed hold-up squads, um, fraud squads, etc., from around the country. When people come to work in these sort of things, they're just, as it were, swept up onto the juggernaut that is the Royal Commission, it starts to get a momentum of its own and everybody that's there just has to cling on and do their utmost to keep up with the pace. When I started the inquiry, I really didn't know what we'd find. I just did not know. I had an open mind and all we could do was go ahead and see what happened.